Ending the HIV AIDS pandemic by 2020 through training and sensitization of young people, the 18th edition of the AIDS Free Holiday Campaign championed by First Lady Mrs. Chantal B S launched with 600 per educators joining the fight nationwide. The Cameroon People's Democratic Movement and the National Union for Democracy and Progress, decade-long contenders in the Adamawa region, wrestle for seats in the upcoming regional election. Their hassle strategy in this newscast. Defense and security forces vow to weed out all perpetrators of insecurity in the town of Bamenda. The operation Bamenda Clean with the support of the population, a walk to normalcy amidst the crisis. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. edition of the AIDS free holiday campaign is on the heels with calls for pro educators to respect measures that will beat both the coronavirus and HIV. 600 pro educators will take part in the two week nationwide exercise which was launched today by the Secretary of State for Public Health, Alim Ayato, representing the Minister of Public Health. Staff Lady Enangakebi has the details. Peculiar about the brief yet solemn ceremony at the headquarters of African Synergy was the respect of the barrier measures to reduce the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, an indication that the young pair educators have a double task this time around to preach HIV AIDS prevention and to talk about the coronavirus. Of the 600 pair educators, 80 are being sponsored by Mrs. Chantal Bia. In this regard, the different orators express gratitude to the First Lady for her constant support and solidarity with youths oriented programs. Our peer educators are uh, educated in terms of fighting against HIV and uh, against uh, the coronavirus. The peer educators also express gratitude to the First Lady through their spokesperson. The generation of now is an Android generation, so through the social medias we are going to pass across these messages to them. The program will be highlighted by the presence of mobile screening units for HIV and AIDS and the coronavirus. The prevalence rate of HIV infection among young women is estimated at 3.6% as against 1.9% in men, according to statistics published in 2018. With the current coronavirus pandemic, the majority of youth have been part of the imposed school break and attempted to indulge in reckless sexual activity that exposed them to the HIV virus. Cynthia Saptala now probes into some of these irresponsible attitudes. 2018 research on HIV AIDS in the territory clearly indicates a high percentage rate of infections amongst those 15 to 49 with young women being more exposed. With influence from social media, drug abuse and early sexual intercourse, the increase in reckless behaviours are said to create more venues for contracting the virus. We have the use of drugs. As a professional, the, the younger patient is a young girl of 13 who comes with a small baby of six months on his arm and she told me that she began the sexual intercourse at the age of 11. Other common attitudes denounced by health experts are age mixing in sexual partnerships where one partner is 10 times older than the respondent. Adolescents suffer from peer pressure. They want to fit in and belong in a certain milieu of friends. There's a lot of comparison which stems up among them, there's bad company, there's unhealthy exposure of, of environment, of habitat, that's where they live, and there is the lack of parental control. You find these children having relationships with men, not even boys of the same age, especially the girls. 
With social pressures mounting as the world confronts a pandemic, experts say parents must be vigilant and indulge in conversations on safe sex practices. Away from health, an important component in achieving a dynamic and resilient economy lies on the capacity of governments to provide decent employment for its citizens. To these effects, a job fair organized by the Ministry of Employment and Vocational Training is underway in Yaoundé to facilitate access to information on job opportunities. Gilbert Ongen reports that the fourth edition would inject no impetus to the socio-economic insertion of youth. The employment fair targets some 2,000 youths in Yaoundé and 1,000 others across the country. It is thus an ideal window to sell ideas and job openings to youths. There are many opportunities that are available for Cameroonian youth for self-employment to medium-sized uh, enterprises that are available to, to employ your, your young Cameroonians. Present at the fairgrounds are some government structures involved in the socio-professional insertion of job seekers. We are using the WhatsApp. We also have our Facebook page. We also have the, the platform for the national employment, which is www.fncm.org. The ultimate vision of the exchange is to systematize the collection, processing, and dissemination of information on viable avenues in the job market. This for the youths whose major headache today is getting a decent job. And now on to the news of the week with the convocation of the electoral colleges for regional elections. The representation of female participation is preoccupying. An advocacy workshop which opened today in Yaoundé is focusing on reinforcing gender mainstreaming in the electoral process. Elections Cameroon and UN Women. The open discussion was attended by women's campaigners, election officials, and representatives of political parties. As we hear in this report by Beatrice Losamba. Statistics reveal Cameroon's female representation in political sectors is yet to reach desired levels. 33% of women in parliament, 26% representation in Senate, and about 8% in local governance. Gender experts say the problem is no longer at the level of the government. The biggest obstacle now, they say, is in the cultural and social barriers and in the fact that women are yet to dare. Women, they think that they are not able. I, we, and you and women, we say no. All women are leaders. It is to break these barriers and reinforce advocacy for gender mainstreaming in the electoral process that this advocacy workshop is taking place in Yaoundé, co-organized by Elections Cameroon and UN Women, and attended by women's advocates, political parties, and election officials. The immediate goal is to up female participation in the upcoming regional elections and overall close the gender gap without which development goals cannot be achieved. In the Adamawa region, the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM, will be engaging in a stiff competition with the National Union for Democracy and Progress, NUDP, in the upcoming regional elections. The two political outfits, who have for several decades vied for the majority of seats in other elections, have no intention to backtrack. Amos Enonia Ketagbo reports on the political duel in the Adamawa. The Edamawa region counts a total of 594 municipal councillors from four political parties. The battle promises to be rude, fierce, and the bone of contention will be in the Vina division. Here, out of the eight councils of the division, three, namely Mbenganga and Belel, are in full control of the CPDM, making a total of 98 councillors, with the CPDM sharing seats with the NUDP at the Ngandre 3 council contrary to four councils notably in Gondure 1 and 2, Matap and Yambaka under full control of the NUDP with a total of 118 councillors. We shall concert of the level of our party to propose competent candidates. The candidate competent. However, faced with such a challenge, the CPDM is poised to turn the tides and record a resounding victory. We have to talk to our people uh, of our party and, and the others 
to make the, the best choice. Though the battle is considered between the CPDM and the NUDP, the implication of other parties with municipal councillors, such as the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, with four councillors in Meganga, and Univer with two councillors at the Ngandere Three Council, might change the outcome. The Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation will be taking part in the December 6 regional elections. This was announced by the party's president, Honorable Cabralibi, during a press briefing today in Yaoundé. In the following excerpt, he expounds on the choice which he thinks should effect change on the country's democratic policies. This regional election is an occasion to generate the regional councils who will work in the special status. For our party, it is an occasion to ameliorate our electoral experience. We are a new comer in the political milieu. So for us, our candidates are young people, they are learning, so it is an occasion for them to improve their experience that will permit us to win the next presidential elections. The chairman of the People's Movement for Dialogue and Reconciliation, Professor Jean-Claude Shanda Tomne, on his part says his party will not heed to any calls for civil disobedience or election boycott. This was after an audience at the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. Here's an excerpt of his views. By convening the regional elections, we are in the full line in the respecting resolution for major national dialogue. This is a proof of honesty, of integrity, and goodwill of the government of, the, of our country, of the president of the republic. And we are saying we are now comfortable with what we have been doing all along in the field by promoting dialogue and reconciliation. Please, let's not get lost with that. Please, let's not go around and doing things that is not appropriate On to this press release from the General Secretariat of the CPDM Central Committee. The Secretary General of the CPDM Central Committee, Mr. Jean Quete, hereby communicates the National President of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, His Excellency Paul Bia, has signed an important decision approving and rendering enforceable the conclusions of the ad hoc disciplinary commission of the Central Committee in charge of hearing cases of indiscipline recorded during the municipal elections of February 9, 2020. A total of 78 cases of indiscipline were sanctioned and in addition, 11 supporters have been dismissed for unsubstantiated facts. Through this decision, which serves as a warning to all CPDM supporters, the national president reaffirms the paramount place of discipline in the functioning of the party. It is signed the Secretary General of the CPDM Central Committee, Jean Quete. Now on to one of our top stories. Defense and security forces in the Northwest region have launched a special operation geared towards securing the regional capital and its environs in an operation codenamed Bamenda Clean. It is expected to check all cases of unscrupulous violence and wanton destruction which has left the population living in uncertainty. Winston Lebgo reports that the population has been enjoined to collaborate with the forces. Operation Bamenda Clean follows hot on the heels of a spate of violent crimes which include kidnappings, robberies and wanton killings. The information is carried in a news release jointly signed by three of the top brass of the Defense and Security Forces in the Northwest. The commander of the 5th Gendarmerie Region, Brigadier General Divine Ekongwese, the Northwest Delegate for National Security, Police Commissioner Emil Gusmo and the commander of the 5th Joint Military Region, Brigadier General Carvale. They've referred to the perpetrators of the violent crimes as terrorists and criminals, saying the atmosphere of terror imposed on the population is unacceptable. In the news release announcing the special operation, the top brass underlined the seriousness of the situation, emphasizing that the restrictions on the movement of motorbikes within the urban perimeter of the Bamenda city area be scrupulously respected. 
We stay in the northwest region where CPDM senators, members of the National Assembly and mayors have created a platform for peace and development in the region. The initiative is that of the Questor of the National Assembly, Honorable Njingo Musa, and in details in lobbying for government support for funds to rebuild the region badly affected by the social political crisis. Eric Langmia Wofo tells us more. This meeting is the first of its kind since they took office as mayors, members of parliament and senators of the northwest region. In this gathering, they discuss ways through which they can work for the interests of the electorate, mentioning peace as the solution to one of the region's most pressing problems of the time, effective school resumption. It is very ridiculous that we follow up a revolution with illiterates. People who don't go to school. Our children will become all bandits and all destroyed, and the region will completely destroyed if there's no education. For the success of this initiative, each of them have been counseled to keep their differences aside and engage the efforts of everyone. This is time now when we are talking about development of the region by the people of the region. Therefore, right down to everybody at the grassroots level, it's important that everybody comes on board. Part of the discussions went on in camera to receive proposals from the elected officials. We shall be having Eric Langmia Wolfer's report on that event in our subsequent newscast. Southwest Governor Bernard Okalabilai has called on all examiners involved in the marking of the GC exams to demonstrate a high sense of professionalism and the respect of COVID-19 barrier measures. He made the call in Boya during the official launch of the marking session of the Cameroon GC board examinations. Details with Fim Bunyu Ayise from Boya. <laughs> The 2020 marking session of the Cameroon GC board examinations would feature the marking of the newly introduced technical and vocational examination. While officially launching the 2020 marking session, Southwest Governor Bernal Kalyabilai called on all stakeholders to observe a moment of silence in honor of those who died while trying to save education. He also called on all stakeholders to show proof of professionalism, report any suspected persons loitering around marking centers, and respect COVID-19 barrier measures. It's worth mentioning that this year's marking exercise will be carried out in 14 marking centers in Limbe and Boya as part of efforts to respect the COVID-19 barrier measures. Medical kits and personal protective equipment have been donated to the Cameroon Police Corps. The benefactor is the Chinese People's Republic through the Chinese Ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Wang Jingwu. Receiving the package, the Delegate General for National Security, Martin Bangangele, reassured that they will protect the officers during the COVID-19 scare. Beatrice Ngum witnessed the events for the 7.30 News. The medical material comprises respirators, oxygen concentrators, forehead thermometers, surgical masks, just to name but these. The donation from the Chinese ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Wang Yingwu, as his government's own support to the government of Cameroon and its people in the fight to eradicate the COVID-19, a laudable initiative which, according to the Delegate General for National Security, Martin Bargangele, is of great importance and will help the police corps to stay safe from the pandemic. The medical material was handed over alongside individual protection gadgets, which the Delegate General said will be used by the National Police Corps to perfect its skills in maintaining peace and order. He noted that the equipment will also be used to fight cyber and cross-border crime as well as reinforce security during major events. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice.
It's 7.50 p.m. and Ghana colleges reassure that reproductive health services continue to be offered in hospitals in spite of the challenges that come with the coronavirus. They hold it is critical for patients to get adequate medical attention in order to avoid future complications. This will be underscored by Baldwin Sama and his guest, Professor Robinson Boo, who are at the Public Health Emergency Operation Center. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kima, and welcome. The fear of the unknown is what has uh, gripped many couples nowadays, especially uh, women uh, during this period that we have the spread of for the coronavirus, talking about uh, sexual and reproductive health services offered in the country, and how has the spread of the virus actually affected sexual and reproductive health services offered in the country? That is what we are discussing tonight with our guest, Professor Robinson Boo, a seasoned gynecologist and director of Family Health in the Ministry of uh, Public Health. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Uh, tell us, Prof, what the situation is as far as uh, sexual and reproductive health services offered in the country during this COVID-19 period is concerned. Uh, since the beginning of this pandemic, our services have been open. There is no way in the country where sexual and reproductive health services have been closed. And so when you go to every hospital, you see antenatal services are open, delivery services are open, the postpartum is open, family planning is open, and vaccination is open. Collectively, this is what you can put in as a package of sexual and productive health activities. And so what is happening is that a lot of women are not using the services. They don't come to the hospital. They believe that when they come to the hospital, that's where they're going to get COVID. No. Our hospitals don't have COVID. I just left the maternity now. I've been operating since morning. It is clean. We respect all what has been given to us that it means to, provide, to, pro to prevent COVID. So women get COVID in crowded places, which we know very well, in bars, in markets, but never in the hospitals. And so my take home message is that our services are still open. They are not influenced in terms of quality, in terms of everything, despite the advent of COVID. So women should come and deliver. And very briefly, Prof, what is the situation talking about the services demanded by these women uh, during this particular period? As I was telling you, women don't come. They are afraid that when they come to the hospital, that is where they are going to get COVID-19. COVID no. Women should come and deliver. They, when they don't come to the big hospitals, they go to places where we don't have the qualified person to take care of them. And the ultimate consequence will be an upsurge of maternal and perinatal mortality, which will fall enough to reduce by 40%. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Robinson Bo. You are a seasoned gynecologist and director of family health in the Ministry of Public Health. You had it all from uh, the director of family health, Esther Kimam. The services of sexual and reproductive health services continue to be offered in a different uh, hospitals in Cameroon, and women should continue going for these services in the different hospitals because the hospitals are COVID-19 free. Back to you, Esther Kimam. Thanks, Baldwin, for reassuring us that we won't get infected if we get to hospital for consultation and also for deliveries. In diplomacy, parliamentary ties between Cameroon and Korea is being threatened as both nations brace up to celebrate 60 years of entente. The Korean ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency jong and Kim, was today granted audience by the senior deputy speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Ilarion Itong, who doubles as the chair of the parliamentary friendship group. Details in this report. The Cameroon-Korea Parliamentary Friendship Group is now more than ever before resolved to deepen ties as the 60th anniversary of their bond approaches. The Korean Ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency jong -an Kim, and the Presidents of the Parliamentary Friendship Group, Senior Deputy Speaker Honorable Ilarong Itong, agree on consolidating the achievements. Last year, uh, Vice Speaker of the Korean National Assembly visited Cameroon, and I hope a uh, Cameroonian uh, parliamentary delegation will visit Korea uh, next year, uh, celebrating uh, 60th anniversary of our uh, diplomatic ties. Korea will also explore new horizons of cooperation with Cameroon. Uh, we also discussed uh, bilateral cooperation uh, in public health, uh, vocational training, 
and uh, Corona Quarantine. Strengthening concerted legislative action for the common will of their communities is another priority. Still in diplomacy, the ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Cameroon, Her Excellency Dr. Corina Frike, has been exchanging with the Minister of Communication, Rene Emmanuel Sadi. Apart from reviewing the age or relations between Cameroon and Germany, both officials discussed developmental projects and the deepening of the decentralization cause in Cameroon. Here's an excerpt of Her Excellency Corina Frike. I wanted to present myself. We uh, discussed long and uh, traditional good relations. We should use this potential to uh, strengthen our relations, to uh, make investments, for instance, uh, easier. We also agreed that good framework for investments are uh, necessary, that political conditions, especially uh, decentralization, make a good basis who has to be uh, constructed for better uh, investment conditions. A colloquium on the theme central and local administration and the quest for development through performance is ongoing at the Yaoundé City Council. It is organized by the Advanced Institute of Public Management and chaired by the Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reform, Joseph Ley. Emmanuela Vernier with the details. We apologize that that report has no sound quality. In other news, a draft technical documents for the rural sector development and a national agricultural investment plan for 2020-2030 is currently being scrutinized. This is at a two-day workshop presided over by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Mbairobi. Luma Slim Davies reports. The poverty rate in the rural areas, where agriculture is widely practiced, hovering around 22% as against 10.5% in urban areas, a strategy for rural sector development is highly important. We have a development strategy for the period 2020 and 2030, and to be in line uh, with the international engagement of the government who will fight against uh, hunger and poverty. Technical document for rural sector development is designed to coordinate a vision in the agricultural sector and attract private sector investment. Producers, farmers, if they are not able to, to work in peace, that is one of an important difficulty. The most important financial effort should be done by the state, improving the environment you know, roads and so on, markets, infrastructure. The technical document for agricultural investment comes up for validation every 10 years. And that ends this edition of the 730 Notes in which you heard that ending the HIV pandemic by 2030 through training and sensitization of young people. The 18th edition of the H3 Holiday Campaign championed by First Lady Mrs. Chantal Bia is underway with 600 predicators joining the fight nationwide. Romeo Chise will be yours at exactly 8.30 p.m. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Cut willing, stay tuned to our programs. Thanks for watching. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing 